Thank you, Connie, for doing a good job of getting me to this point, and hopefully I can take it on beyond this point. Um, now, I'm glad to be here again. I'm glad to uh, uh, offer Pastor John a, a chance to get away uh, with Marnie. I think they've gone to a wedding this weekend. Um, he originally asked me to do next Sunday's sermon, but things worked out differently, and so he asked me if I could move it up a week. I said, no problem, which then allows me, I'm going to be playing hooky next week. I'm going to a Cubs game down in Cincinnati. The whole family is going, right? And we're all going to wear blue, correct? I'm looking at my family that's here this morning just to make sure that they know. Now, I grew up in Chicago, and um, I was a White Sox and a Cubs fan, which I now discover you can't be both. Uh, it's a shame. But I could get out of church service, get on the elevator, and get at Wrigley Field in time for the ball game. Wonderful thing. Can't do that from here. But uh, so uh, that's where we're going to be next week. Uh, I hope you'll be back here next week. So, uh, and Connie mentioned that I, my last appointment was at Whitestown Church. And um, I came here for a year of, with Pastor Carol. And um, then we go to, to over to Westfield Christ Church for another service. I was getting a lot of church services in. But then the superintendent came and asked me, or told me about an opportunity in Whitestown. As, and I could never say no to a superintendent, getting better at it. But uh, uh, when there the first Sunday there, I'm not sure if I told you this, the first Sunday there, I had 11 people in worship. Not a great number. The second week I had 22 in worship. I thought if we keep doing this, we would have 44, then 88, and I would lose count of hop beyond that. Well, it didn't work out to be that way. Just we, we got it to about 30, which is pretty good. Uh, but it didn't grow much beyond that. And then COVID came, and we just lost all the momentum we ever had. And in that time, I said, well, you know, maybe it's time I retire again. And um, uh, I did. So uh, brought me back here, and I sit right about there. I, Ruth, raise your hand. That's my wife. I usually sit next to her, but that's my daughter taking my place, keeping it warm for this week. So that, that I had sort of two announcements. I, I wrote some notes here uh, that kind of did not mention. One is uh, we've heard about the fires in Maui. Uh, the United Methodist Committee in Relief has a project fund going for that. And if uh, my check from this Sunday will go towards that. Uh, num project number 901670. So uh, remember, that. but then uh, Amcor is around the world and we need to support it. And hopefully you can remember its mission work. And now, Connie, I'm not sure where you grew up. You grew up as a Methodist, United Methodist? Um, yes. Yeah. Did you go to Camp Riverville? Pardon? Did you go to Camp Riverville? No, no. Oh. No, no. No, first, first? I wasn't able to go to camp oh. back in my day. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just bringing that up. Uh, and did any of you go to Camp Riverville? Oh. Now, you weren't there at the very beginning because they're celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Uh, September uh, 16th, they're going to have a celebration of Camp Riverville's 100th anniversary. And as you raised your hands, you know the effect that it's had on your life and your faith. And then for those from the North Conference, Upworth Forest is having their 100th anniversary, September 30th. And that has an enorm enormous effect on my life. Uh, I don't remember Bishop Coiner, he, he came to faith at Upworth Forest. I remember him sharing that. So those are several dates coming up. I hope some of you can get to those uh, or just remember those events. But let's bow for a word of prayer. Oh Lord, may my words this morning become your word. And if, my, if I fail at this, forgive me. Move on. But, but if they touch someone's heart, it is your word that coming alive in all of us. In your name we pray. Amen. 
This sermon began at the men's prayer group here at church. They were thinking about uh, a scripture they could remember, they're memorized. An important thing to do, you know, some of us would say John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. I remember mine from John's gospel, John 11, uh, Jesus wept. They then told me, no, that does not work. Somehow it's too short, even though I think it has an important uh, statement about who Jesus is in that he cares. There's also in Luke's gospel talk where Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. And again in Hebrews, it mentions Jesus weeping. This is an important emo human emotion, but it did not pass muster. So they forced me, they forced me to go out and find something else to remember. And I guess they would probably wouldn't allow John 3.16, because yeah, it's just, you know. So I went to Jeremiah, and I found in Jeremiah, um, I have plans for you, declares the Lord. Now, it uh, goes on and says, I have plans for, for, for you to prosper. And some other scriptures, some other translations has peace. Another one has welfare. But then it says, I have plans for hope and your future. That's where this whole sermon began. And uh, I want to share with you, when I, re when I retired from uh, Whitestown, I, was, I was, thought I was going to have plenty of time Plenty of time to do the things I wanted to do, which is basically napping, but I had plenty of time to do that. Well, my do local doctor here sent me to another doctor, a specialist, who then sent me on to another specialist, and they informed me, you've got cancer. And I'm just sitting there, oh, how, do you, how, do, how does one respond to that? I was dumbfounded, didn't know what to say, what to do. And they said, well, we're going to start treatments for you. And so for six months, once a week, I would go to uh, Riverview Hospital, the infusion center, and there's a disagreement in my family. I say the needle was this long. My wife doesn't think it's that long, more like that. But I still think it's that long. And we'll go see uh, this week. I'll be going back in. For six, for six months, went there. And they gave me the shot, and I would feel terrible and bad. And then they said, well, you're doing pretty good. We'll change it now to once a month for two years. I have now finished my first year of that, and so I now have it until next September of next year. Once a month, I go over there and get my treatment, and, and I come home, and I'm uh, doing much better, much better. Uh, we asked for a chair here just because in case I tend to faint or get weak. And that's happened. I, when I was white side twice, I went to the hospital, mainly because I was dehydrated. That's why we have water here. Or, so they have a chair just in case. But hopefully that won't happen. Hope it won't happen. And so you know, I asked the doctor last month at our monthly visit, what's the prognosis? I like that big word. What's the prognosis? And this is where you're doing well didn't quite answer my question, did it? So, it's hope. You know, that's maybe the prognosis that I have is hope. Hope. A number of years ago, a, a great king decided to know, he wanted to know everything. This is before the internet and smartphones, where I can sit around now and you know, ask how many how many seminaries are there in the Methodist Church? And what are their names? Where are they? I don't, you know, back in those days they had the Encyclopedia Britannica. Do you remember that? The world book? You know, a shelf full of books giving us all knowledge. And so he decided, I need to know everything in the world. And so he sent his wise men, the sages, his magis out, and they came back several years later with this shelf full of books with all the knowledge of the world. He says, this is good. This is good. But, you know, I don't have time to do all that reading. How about if you come back with 
all the knowledge summed up in one sentence. And they grumbled and mumbled and they went off and they came up and they came back a number of years later and says, we have it. It is, this too shall pass. That's good, that's good. Well, how about, let's top that off with all the knowledge of the world in one word. And they mumbled and grumbled again and they went off and I'm not sure how long they took, but they decided, they, they finally came up with a word and they came back. And they came back with, in my understanding, they came back with the word hope. I think in many ways, that sums up all the knowledge of the world. Some would say maybe hope in Jesus Christ, but that's not one word. Or Jesus or Christ, maybe all the knowledge we need. But for me and for my purposes, hope. The one word that we need to, to have is hope. Hope. Hope for the future. Jeremiah, prophet, the time of the exile. When things were going bad, they went bad for the Israelites. It was the time of exile. It was a time of uh, people being carried away, the royal family being executed. The king was, was stood in front of his family and they executed his sons, his family. And then they blinded him for those last sight would be them dying. And then they carried him off into exile. And they carried off the, the rich and the generals and the poor. Jeremiah often is a book of doom and gloom. And if things could go wrong, they went worse. Garnet was a member of our church in Gas City. Back in 9-11, she began to watch the news faithfully or maybe too faithfully. She got into a, a fugue state, a, a, almost comatose, and she just would just sit there staring. 9-11 just overwhelmed her. It took, it took her to the hospital. It took several days for her, for her to come out of that fugue. We can be overwhelmed with the news. We can be overwhelmed by, by the things of our own lives. We can be overwhelmed by cancer. We can be overwhelmed by loss of jobs. We can be overwhelmed by loss. We can be overwhelmed. But the one word that comes through is hope. Plan on it. For God has a plan for us, and it's, I think, based on hope and a future. Not so much the past or the present, but the future. I want to get this quote right, because it's from Dwight David Eisenhower, and you know, the, he was the commander of the D-Day uh, invasion of Europe. When th if anything could go wrong, would go wrong, and many things did, but he was able to get success, the troops on Europe shores, and finally on to Germany and Berlin. But he made this quote, in preparing for battle, I have always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. Sometimes that sounds contradictory, and I, maybe Eisenhower wasn't always the clearest speaker, but I think sometimes he wanted to confuse us. But I think what he's getting at is that we may have plans, but sometimes we have to go to plan B, or plan C, or plan D, or plan I will hopefully we'll never get to plan Z. But we may have to. But I think God's plan for us is hope. That's the driving force behind, behind his plans for us. Our hope in Jesus Christ. Our hope in the future. Our hope. When we, we moved here, when Ruth and I moved here, uh, to be closer to our grandsons, Jacob and Landon, though our daughter lives here in town, and that's not her, I'm sorry to say, but our grandsons were here. People talked about having our forever home. We had lived in parsonages 
uh, for the last 30 years or so. But this is our forever home. If I corrected them, says, no, this is not our forever home. We have a forever home with Jesus in heaven, with God in heaven. And someday we'll get there, but for now, this is our temporary home, and then our forever home. That's our hope. But in the meantime, we've got to take care of our house here. Do the weeding, painting, uh, all, all the other things that we seem to want to put off. But that's part of the plan. A few years ago, about a little while ago, uh, someone challenged me again, I, you know, to put things into one word or two words, to put in my mission statement for my life. What would be my mission in life? Pa uh, Pastor John had a sermon a little while ago, it was a kingdom work. This is sort of the same idea, is that, you know, what would be my mission in life? I'm going to challenge you to think of what your mission is statement would be as well in two words. First, we're going to begin with, with hope. Hope. For a while, I thought maybe you'd preach hope because I did, used to do that for a, a living, but only do, I've done it just a few times lately. And so we had, I had to shift that from preaching to live hope. Part of that living hope is going to once a month over to to Riverview and getting my sh big shot. Part of my hope is planning uh, to go to the baseball game with the family. And my uh, other daughter and I have a plan that to go to every baseball park, a major league baseball park. And we're about, a, um, we're, we're not, we've got a lot more to do, but that's our hope that we get that done. And so, you know, live hope. Would it be for you, grace, mercy, kindness? Live, hope, share, those things? What would your two-word mission statement be? And then live it. For me, it's live hope. And my, my plans, my plans for the future. One is to continue physical therapy. Uh, Pastor, I admire Pastor John for getting up and around and moving so well. I stumble and I trip and I want it so I don't get up and down the stairs. And, and so that's why I'm standing here in the pulpit holding on tightly. So I'm doing my physical therapy to get stronger and stronger so I can begin to walk places. Because at one time I had the hope of uh, walking the Appalachian Trail. But don't think I'm going to do that now. Plan B. Also, I'm also beginning plan therapy. Planning. I love to make lists. My wife finds them everywhere and says, do you still need this? Yeah, I mean, so I, yep, I did all that. But part of it is you know, going to every baseball park. September trip, I'm going to go see my brother. Who, he, he makes a lot of trips. He's in Iceland right now. But we're just going to go out to see him in Washington, D.C. And there will be other trips we're hoping to plan. And then also prayer therapy. Prayer, prayer therapy. So those are all part of my plans, and I invite you to make plans for your mission statement. What will it be? Share faith, share Christ, give hope, Share hope, share mercy, share whatever it might be in two words. So you can remember it. I can remember it as well. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Our future is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Lord. May our missions be fulfilled in you. May your mission be fulfilled in us. To give us life, to give us hope, to give us a home, to give us love. 
We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we are turning to the last hymn, I'm going to ask you, what, what, what's the word that connects all three hymns this morning? Just check. If you know it, see me in the back, and there is no prize. Sorry. But just, but just, just maybe a, a pat on the back for a good job well done. Shall we stand and sing, Great is thy faithfulness? It's number 140 in the hymn book. Mm -hmm. 